everybody, Ziv here. Welcome to this video. In the previous one, I started talking about the flap instruments in explaining the surgical kit. In this video, we'll talk about the osseous instruments. So once you reflected a flap, you are exposing the bone, and depending on the particular surgery you're performing, there'll be different instruments that you'll need to be using to make bone adjustments, to remove bone, change the shape of bone, uh, basically deal with everything that is ne that needs to be done after you reflected the flap. Now, I identified four instruments that you need to be using after a flap has been reflected. I call them the osseous instruments. And interestingly, two of those instruments are curettes because once we reflect the flap, you'll find tissue tags, there's going to be calculus, there's going to be some root debridement that you may need to do, there, there'll be osseous defects that very often can be cleaned out with curettes. So these are included in osseous tools, although they're not osseous instruments. The two other instruments are double-ended, so each end has its own purpose, and I'm going to describe to you what each instrument does. The first instrument is the Younger Good Curette. I call it OS-1. It's a pretty massive curette that I use for removal of tissue tags, the bridement of the root surfaces, uh, going into those large bony defects, and just doing a good clean out. It handles really well in my hands uh, using both ends of the curette for a, an initial good debridement. The second instrument is also a curette. It's a Gracie 1314 posterior curette. It has a smaller um, end, and I use it as well for the bridement. Now I can use that curette in smaller defects, uh, easy to access around line angles, and use it uh, you know, quite frequently, not like a curette, almost like a debridement tool to scoop out granulation tissue and infection from around the teeth, it's a, both curettes are used very frequently in periodontal surgery, and both need to be sharpened before surgery as you would for a curette. An instrument needs to be efficient and a curette needs to be sharp. The third instrument is a file, call it an interproximal file or a Sugarman file, and it's meant for interproximal reduction. For example, in functional crown lengthening, when we need to reduce bone circumferentially in between teeth where there's a contact, you can reduce bone carefully in between teeth. And a great feature of this tool is that it has a flat side. So the flat side is facing the tooth. So when you're reducing bone, you're not damaging the adjacent tooth. You can use this tool uh, basically in an in and out motion in between the teeth. Uh, you can angle it depending on the size of the embrasure. And word of caution, uh, use it carefully because sometimes uh, this can get wedged in between the teeth and can lead to a couple of seconds of terror when you can't take it out. But luckily teeth have PDL and it's quite uh, simple to wiggle it out. Uh, a very critical tool in periodontal surgery uh, and functional crown lengthening. The fourth tool uh, called OS4 is our bone chisel. It has two sides. It has a straight side or a straight chisel that is used in pushing motions. And the other side is used in pulling motions for osteoplasty to change the shape of bone. You can also use it for bone harvest and uh, collect some bone chips. Uh, I use it very frequently for periodontal surgery, uh, osseous recontouring, aesthetic crown lengthening when I want to do some manual osteoplasty uh, towards the end of the procedure. So this uh, tool has two ends. And I feel that's all you need when it comes to manual bone reshaping. So in designing this kit, I try to keep it pretty simple and limit the number of osseous instruments to four. Uh, two curettes, the Younger Good and the Gracie 1314 posterior. 
the interproximal file for interproximal reduction, and the two-ended bone chisel. Guys, things don't have to be complex and overwhelming. There's really no point in having too many instruments just in case on your kit it leads to confusion, it leads to just time wasted. Uh, pick the instruments that you're using on a regular basis. I shared with you the ones that I'm using. And I hope this video added some clarity about the osseous instruments. In the next one, I'm going to talk about bone grafting instruments, the exact tools that I'm using and in which sequence and how to use them for extraction sockets and osseous defects. See you in the next one.